kindly share the screen. Yes, good morning to all. Today we are about to discuss section 80 of the Arbitration Act, section 18, subsection 3 of the MSA Media Act, and section 24 of the MSA Media Act and the related case law. Why we are discussing this section 80, section 18, 18 of subsection 3 and section 24 of the MSA Media Act is that as per section 80 of the Arbitration Act, a person who acts as a conciliation conciliator cannot also act as an arbitrator. That means if I am in conciliation, if I involved in conciliation proceedings to the parties, to the conciliation phase, I cannot become an arbitrator for the same case. Okay. So I cannot be an advocate or counsel for the same matter. So see section 80 of the arbitration and conciliation act 196 role of conciliator in other proceeding, unless otherwise agreed by the parties. The conciliator shall not act as an arbitrator or as a representative or counsel of a party in any arbitral or judicial proceedings in respect of dispute that is the subject of the conciliation proceedings. The conciliator shall not be presented by the parties as a witness in any arbitral or judicial proceedings. This is section 80. So coming to section 18 subsection 3. What section 18 subsection 3 of MSC Media Act is where the conciliation initiated under subsection 2 is not successful and stands terminated without any settlement between the parties, the council shall either itself take up the dispute for arbitration or refer it to an institution or center providing alternate dispute resolution services for such arbitration and the provisions of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 shall then apply to the dispute as if the arbitration was in pursuance of an arbitration agreement referred to in subsection 1 of section 7 of that act. See, here in the MSME Act, council itself do can do the conciliation or it may also have the same council can do the arbitration. So, council, firstly, they will do conciliation. The conciliation fails, then they will take it the matter for themselves for arbitration or refer it to some other institutes or any arbitration centers. This is what section 18 subsection 3 says. Okay. If you above see that section 80, it says that the same conciliator cannot be an arbitrator. Here in section 18 subsection 3 states that MSME council can conciliate and it can also arbitrate by either itself. Based on this, the council is doing the arbitration. Okay. Though they are doing the conciliation, they are acting as an arbitrators also. Okay, now coming to section 24 of the MSA Media Act 2006, there is a provision in the act which states that overriding effect. The provisions of section 15 to 23 shall have effect notwithstanding anything inconsistent there with any other law for the time being in force. Okay, so these are all the very three important provisions. Now, there is a case law in this matter. Just come down. Scroll down. Yes, this is an order passed by the Chhattisgarh High Court. In the matter of SEW Infrastructure Limited versus Micro Small Enterprises Council, which is an R1, that is respondent one, and versus Core Fab Projects Private Limited, respondent number two. See, SEW Infrastructure Limited is got some tenders orders for the government company National Mineral Development Corporation. And they have sub subcontracted to the other person that is Core Fab Projects Private Limited, who will supply the goods to this company that is SCW Infrastructure, and they will give the services to the National Mineral Development Corporation. This is something in our argument. This Core Fab Projects Private Limited has supplied the goods to this uh, SCW Infrastructure as per the contract, and uh, and the payment is not made by this SCW Infrastructure due to some disputes. This core fair projects uh, respondent number two filed and referred the matter to the MSC Council. When the matter was uh, went for the conciliation by the MSC Council, MSC Council uh, conciliated the matter and they passed an order for arbitration where it was the conciliation has been failed. When the matter is referred for the arbitration and the arbitration proceedings were over, the, the matter is pending for final award to be passed by the MSC Council. This petitioner has filed a case before the 
High Court, that is Chhattisgarh High Court, stating that as per Section 80 of the Con Arbitration Conciliation Act, the MSC Council has no powers because they cannot act, and the same persons cannot be act as an arbitrator. So these arbitral proceedings, the MSC Council have no jurisdiction at all. They challenge the tribunal's jurisdiction. After that, for usual of this, all the documents and going to the section of 24 and section 18, subsection 3, the court held that MSC Council has the powers to arbitrate the matter itself as per section 18, subsection 3, and as per section 24 of the MSME Act, it has an overriding effect over the Arbitration Act. So, MSC Council has the powers to arbitrate, even if they, reason, they are acted as a conciliator. So, MSC ME. MSMED Act has an overriding effect over the Arbitration Act. This is the crux of this matter. Let us see what this is actually. The parties into it is the case between the SEW infrastructure. I have told this matter. Now coming to this uh, observation part. Just go up one line up. Just go one line up. Observation. No, no, no. Just go up. Not down. Yes, wait, wait. Observation given by this High Court is that MSC Facilitation Council acted as a conciliator can also administer the arbitration bar under Section 80 of Arbitration and Conciliation Act does not apply. This is the observation. The parties enter into an agreement wherein the petitioner agreed to supply and transfer certain goods. Certain dispute arose between the parties. The respondent invoked the jurisdiction of the MSC Facilitation Council in terms of Section 18 of the MSC Media Act. After the failure of the conciliation process, the parties are referred to the arbitration administered by the facilitation council. <clears throat> Come down. Scroll down. Challenging the jurisdiction of the tribunal to adjudicate the dispute, the petitioner filed the writ petition. The facilitation council has already acted as a conciliator in the conciliation proceedings between the parties. Therefore, in view of Section 80 of the Arbitration Act, it is now precluded from the administering the arbitration proceedings even between the parties. The tribunal consists of an even number of arbitrators. Arbitrators have not filed their disclosure in terms of Section 12 of the Arbitration Conciliation Act. The council can only adjudicate on disputes which are regarding non-payment of a mode. It cannot decide dispute regarding price variation, etc. The respondent countered the arguments on behalf of the petitioner on the following grounds. The court itself directed the respondent to file its reference before the MSC Council in terms of Section 18 of the MSME Act. The pleadings in the arbitration case are complete from both the parties. The case has been finally heard and only the award is to be passed. Therefore, the petitioner has an alternate remedy to challenge the award under Section 34 of the Act. Keeping in mind the limited ju judicial interference permission under the Arbitration Act, this is not a fit case for exercising of, exercise of jurisdiction under Article 226 of the Constitution of India. Various high courts across the country have held that Section 18 of the 80 of the Ar Act 1996 cannot override the provisions of the MSME Act 2006 and it cannot prevent the facilitation council to act as an arbitrator. Come down. Analysis by the court. The court observed that the respondent filed, filed the reference before the council only on the direction given by the court and in, in an earlier petition filed by the petitioner. The court has held that the bar under section 80 of the Arbitration Act, which prevents the conciliator from acting as the arbitrator, does not apply to MSC Facilitation Council, which can administer both the conciliation as well as arbitration proceedings. The court further has observed that Section 80 of the Arbitration Act cannot override the provisions of MSC Media Act to prevent the Council from acting as arbitrator. The court referred to Section 24 of the MSC Media Act, which gives overriding effect to the provisions of MSC Media Act over any other law. It held that combined reading of Section 18 and 24 of the Act 2006 shows that there is an overriding effect over provisions of Section 80 of the Act 1996. Therefore, this red petition is dismissed accordingly. Okay. So, any doubt, you can ask to me. No, sir. Okay. Now, I think, uh, Bhavana, take the... Yes, sir. Now, I think we can proceed with the second part of the session. Yes. Just a second, sir. Let me open the document. Okay.
Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will be taking one order from ROC, which was passed on 9th February 2024. This order is for penalizing a company named Trishti Development and Communication Limited for wrongly filing e of e form pass three. Name of the company, as I mentioned, is Trishti Development and Communication Limited. What happened was the company filed GNL one for adjudication of penalty for defect in filing e form pass three. And the defect was figures in board resolution that was attached in e form pass three. So instead of eight crore eighty six lakh six thousand six hundred and ten, the figure was mentioned this instead of eight crore eighty six lakh six hundred six thousand and eight hundred. So such a petty mistake made in the board resolution, which was an attachment, because of which the director as well as the professional both were penalized. So violation of rule 8 3 of the company's registration offices and rules 2014 the authorized signatory and the professional if any who certify e form shall be responsible for the correctness of the contents of e form and the correctness of the enclosures attached with the electronic form so there was incorrect attachment in the e form and which was certified by both the director as well as the professional Section 450 of the Companies Act 2013, punishment where no specific penalty or punishment is provided. If a company or any officer of the company or any other person contravenes any of the provision of this Act or the rules made thereunder or any condition, limitation or restriction subject to which any approval, sanction, consent, confirmation, recognition, direction or exemption in relation to any matter has been accorded, given or granted, for which no penalty or punishment is provided elsewhere in the Act, the company and every officer of the company who is in default or such other person shall be liable to a penalty of 10,000 rupees. And this is the reason the professional as well as the director were penalized with 10,000 each. Name of the director is Satyan Mishra. He was a signatory of e form Pass 3. He was penalized with 10,000 because of Section 450 and uh, CS Arpita Saxena, who was the professional who certified this form. So uh, we being professionals or budding professionals file forms every day. And uh, I feel personally that it is a clerical error because the figures were not very huge, as we can see. And this is a real case, and the penalty is real. And I think we can be more careful while filing the forms and more careful with the figures in the attachment because all these minor mistakes can lead to serious repercussions and also tamper the image of the company and the professional as well. So I feel... This is it from my side. Uh, any query you can ask. No, Bhavna, thank you. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Todd.